second oldest of eight, the oldest son of five. He grew up about 50 feet from where he lives now, at 2047 Midville Mine. 27 years ago, he married the girl who lived down the road from him, whom he started dating when he was 16. At the age of 23, he became my father. And at 50, he still has the spirit of a seven-year-old boy. You felt so kind and generous. I don't know, you keep on giving. My parents were married for three years before they had me. When they decided to have children, it was due to the coaxing of my father. Mom claimed she never really wanted any kids. I believe that changed, even though she may never admit it. Regardless of his age, Dad could always be spotted at the family reunions playing hide-and-seek, tag, or fishing for minnows in the Sulphur Creek. He was the cool dad, who would run around the yard, flailing his arms and bellowing like the rest of us kids. On blazing summer days, while Mom sat in her lawn chair sullenly shaking her head, Dad was the first person to run through the sprinkler fully clothed. When I was 11, it rained so much that our yard flooded, and Dad, being the responsible adult, did only what Dad would do. Took off his shirt, went sprinting toward the river of water, and discovered nature's own slip and slide. Rug rides were Dad's own invention. Sitting on the couch in our living room some evening, my brother and I would hear him say, Who wants a rug ride? We knew this was a time of night more worthy than Kids Incorporated or the Mickey Mouse Club, so we shot up from the floor and sprinted to the corner of the basement in anticipation. Dad would dig out the old brown and orange paisley printed comforter, grab it by the corner, and start pulling it around the basement, while my brother and I sprawled out on the bedspread, clinging to it like two pieces of Velcro. I can't imagine how Dad realized that being drug around on the basement floor on a blanket would be entertaining, but it was great. I wish we all could be takers of rug rides. Flash warnings and dark holes are the only things I remember fearing as a child. Waking my brother and me up for school on the mornings that he was either laid off or rained out, phrases common to any asphalt crew, Dad would stand in the hall where he could reach both my light switch and my brother's. He then proceeded to flicker the light and yell, Flash warnings! I'm not sure where this technique originated, but it was more effective than any alarm clock. And more annoying. The dark hole was even worse, in my opinion. This concoction consisted of Dad lying on the floor and grabbing our legs while saying in a low, monotone voice, You're entering the dark hole. You will never escape. He would then pull us into his arms where we couldn't see anything and where I was convinced it was a complete vacuum, void of all oxygen and light. My brother somehow figured out how to escape the dark hole by squirming through Dad's arms. I only figured out how to hyperventilate. Dad never went to college. He always told me, college isn't for everyone. I wanted to remind him that being the foreman of a construction company isn't for everyone either. But I think he already knew that. Dad thrived on saying, do I have stupid written across my forehead, when I attempted to pull more than sheep's clothing over his eyes. I know part of the reason I never participated in illegal activities during the times when those were socially encouraged was partly because of self-conviction and partly because I wanted Dad to be proud of me. He had, and still has, the psychic ability granted to dads who are willing to use the power to know what I was going to do before I even did it. This gift enabled him to predict that Jimmy wouldn't last, Matt wasn't the one, and someday I'd be out in the real world, and that's when I'd understand. Dad hates to shop. He only owns about 20 articles of clothing. If given a new shirt, he feels it's necessary to balance the gain with a loss. He'll throw out one of his plaid shirts that he's worn so much that it's comparable to cheesecloth. His four basic clothing groups include Hanes t-shirts, short sleeve plaid shirts, tapered Levi's stonewashed jeans, and Dickies, those pants that are usually khaki green and found at Kmart. To my knowledge, he owns three pairs of shoes, white New Balance tennis shoes, tan construction boots covered in asphalt, and brown dress shoes that look more like house slippers. I believe he owns one suit in a tie since last Christmas. 
As much as Dad detests shopping, he was always willing to take me. When I went to pick out my senior prom dress, Dad drove Mom and me to Minerva to find one. After trying on countless numbers of dresses to no avail, Dad, sitting on the sofa provided by the boutique, got up, guided me by the shoulders to the other side of the store, and said, Do me a favor. Just try on that one dress over there. He pointed to a mannequin modeling simple purple A-line dress with beading at the top that trickled down to the waist. It looked stylish enough, so I humored him and tried it on. Not only did I find that dress flattering, but five years later, I modeled my wedding dress after it. It's endearingly strange to be able to say that my dad picked out my senior prom dress. I think Dad had a midlife crisis. Maybe it was 20. I believe that's when I had mine. He never did well with the idea of aging. I thank him for my own phobia. Up until 30, Dad always combed his jet black hair forward. But after his crisis, he began to slick it back. Lightly dusted on the sides and thinner on top, it's now in a permanent horizontal position and that cannot be reversed. I can't recall anything else changing at the time. His blue eyes never lost their luster. His skin was still leathery due to excess sun exposure. He still wore the same plaid short sleeve shirts and tapered leg jeans. Dad still went to bed at 9 o'clock and woke up at 5. He still watched Tom and Jerry and ate chocolate ice cream with potato chips. He still got confused when we spelled out sentences instead of just saying the words. And he still spent the winters he was laid off remodeling houses for friends. He still leaves by saying adios and pronounces it incorrectly. He still gets easily embarrassed by old women who tease him about being good enough to take home. He still gets a comical grin on his face when he tries to lie. He still gets belligerent if someone takes his Easter egg coloring before he's finished with it. He still expects the respect he deserves. And he still answers my questions with, Because I'm your father. And waits for me to reply, And I'm your daughter. <laughs>